starts on the shop floor. We have to have sensors and agents on the shop floor who give us a status of the business process, of the production process in real time. We will see autonomous handling units, material handling units on the, on the ground, making sure that we have a seamless flow of the components I need to manufacture. We see more and more autonomous systems in the plant working hand in hand, making it even more efficient and more effective in the usage of the assets. But we also have to make sure that this whole infrastructure is running. So predictive maintenance and the understanding of the real-time situation of my assets on the ground is becoming key. You want to avoid downtimes, you want to make sure that this flow is working. But it doesn't stop within the plant. It has to be hand-in-hand -hand with logistics and transportation. Now the area of manufacturing is one of the areas which is a very nice proof point where we partner. So we have a strong partnership with Siemens because they have proven to be the market leader in the area of machine-to-machine -machine integration. So Siemens MindSphere, their platform for the Internet of Things, for the manufacturing area, for industry, for all, is running on our SAP HANA cloud platform, making use of our IoT services. Now looking into going one step back into those networks, I just said you can't just look at manufacturing. You have to look at manufacturing and logistics. You have to look at the end-to-end -end supply chain. We see that we have to bring a lot of things together. And as I said in the beginning, at the end, it's the process that has to work. And the process works better if we can connect the dots by bringing in the things and the data of the things which are relevant for the process. So we want to bring the thing into business, be it the vehicle or the machine. And by adding components and things to that network, we continue to close the loop. If there are changes in transportation, transportation of the future might require drones or alternative means of, of transportation. We add those things to our network. We are, yes, we in development, you have us being nerds. We, we like to look into the technology per se, but technology has to be an enabler for the business process, which is led at the end, um, the ultimate goal. Looking into some domains a little bit more detailed, I would like to start with the area of mobility and the connected vehicle. I think this is a very interesting area where we see how complete industries need to transform. The automotive industry is faced with the challenge that over the next years they will see a decline in sales of new vehicles and new cars. Some of the trends I mentioned earlier, like mobility as a service or consumption, of vehicles instead of ownership. So what are the new business models? How can they earn money if it's not the car itself or if it's not the forklift or the truck? We see a general trend in manufacturing, in automotive in specific, that the companies start to think about digital services in addition to the physical good. And then the interesting question is, if I connect the vehicle, how do I earn money? Is that pure investment or do I see scenarios where I can really make money out of it and sustainable? A lot of areas where this has been proven. We see, for example, usage-based insurance, an incentive for drivers behaving well. You need to connect to the vehicle. You have to have an understanding of the driver behavior. You can calculate something like an echo score, and then you can incentivize based on his behavior or the other way around. We do this with partners. Like MSG Global is building usage-based insurance on top of our Vehicle Insights platform because we want to use the network and the domain expertise in the network to contribute and then build specific solutions on top. Other areas is remote diagnostic. You want to be able to predict the potential failure of the vehicle. Again, this is something where we need to partner. Who has the knowledge about the vehicle, the bill of material, the failure codes? It's the suppliers, it's the automotive companies who have that extensive and in-depth knowledge where we bring their capabilities together with ours to build those kind of scenarios. But looking into the consumer, um, from a con consumer perspective again, mobility means, from an experience perspective, I get out of the train, I get into the car, I do ride sharing or car sharing, I want to be recognized, I just want to go from A to B, but on my way from A to B, as you've seen earlier in the example of IBM with Oli, I want to get recommendations. Maybe there's a shop, and the shop even offers parking services. 
and this parking lot is assigned to me because I already registered for it and I can do mobile payment as I go. This is the way how we bring things together. So we have the vehicle as part of the business process, but we also bring the business into the vehicle. But looking at a little bit more bigger vehicles, I mean cars are nice, but uh, certainly trucks and trailers do the majority of the, uh, the real business. Um, transportation and logistics will change as well. I mean telematics for trucks and trailers is not new, but so far I don't see that anyone really has connected the entire supply chain. Just consider, you're in manufacturing, you produce the good, you track and trace the good as it's being produced. The good is in the warehouse. From the warehouse it goes to the forklift, the forklift goes to the dock. At the dock you load it into the truck. The truck is on the road, it re the receiver changes, uh, repeats the game by putting the good back into the warehouse. Currently you have a number of systems doing part of that process. Warehouse management, transportation management, you have the logistics provider with their own telematic system. The truck has a different telematics provider than the trailer. The forklift is managed by a different provider than the truck. So how do we bring this together? How can we really bring together the extended supply chain and enable track and trace across the entire chain? This is if you do all this on one platform and if the platform is capable to connect to the individual providers and systems and to make the data which is relevant available in the entire network. And in this network you have the, the plant manager, you have the transportation manager, you have the freight forwarder, you have the logistics provider. Everybody has to communicate and has to share the relevant data. Simple things like an expected arrival time. Our customer Hamburg Port Authority already increased their throughput in their limited uh, geographical reach because they cannot grow. Yeah? They are in Hamburg. They have no ch they, there's no, no way to build more parking lots. Yeah? So they have to increase the throughput. How do they achieve that? By building a network around transportation and as I just described, being able to share relevant data between all parties involved so that you avoid queues, you avoid empty trucks, and uh, you make it far more efficient. But whatever scenario we talk about, we talk about huge amount of data. Just an individual person is predicted to generate 150 gigabyte by 2020 per day, which exceeds your average uh, latest smartphone by, by maybe uh, doubling it. And dealing with masses of data needs two things. One is, if you have, if your son, daughter is, 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 is going to the market now and is interested in IT, recommend to become a data scientist. Data scientists are really, really the people we need. In development, in the companies we're working with, you need those kind of skills of people who are able to work with data. But that's just one part of the matter. The other side is artificial intelligence and machine learning. You have to be able to predict. You have to be able to identify patterns and you have to be able to come to conclusions by making use of the data you have in your storage. But companies don't do that just for the sake of, I have data, now I want to come to insights and see what's gonna happen. Scenarios like predictive maintenance are again tied to a specific business model. You might require the capability to predict because your business model is changing. Let's take Kaiser compressors as an example. Kaiser is um, one of the market leaders in compressors. Since decades, they are selling compressors. Now they're changing their business model from selling compressors to selling compressed air as a service. In the past, the compressor would stand in the plant of the customer, owned by the customer, with the service technician taking care of the machine. Now, the compressor stands in the plant, but it's owned by CASA, and they have a service level agreement with their client that the compressed air is delivered in a specific time and a specific quality. Now you need to be able to ensure that this compressor is up and running whenever it's needed. You can't do that by sending around your service people across the globe and just trying to see if everything is going well. You have to become in, uh, re uh, in the position to do that remotely. And even better, you have to be able to predict if something could happen based on the status of the machine. I think this is a very nice example where those two words
words come together because of a pressing need. We see, when I talk to clients, two motivations to deal with IoT. Some are with a back at the wall. They see shrinking margins, they see inefficiency in their manufacturing plants, they see, when we talk about industry 4.0, they feel that they're at industry 2.0, so we help those clients with startup packs like in manufacturing for um, industry 4.0 scenarios. And there are the others, they are the innovators, like Kaiser um, and other examples where companies change the model and IoT is the enabler, and those companies are the role models, basically, to bring those two worlds together, and they are really executing on the digital transformation. Now let's look at SAP's portfolio. I mean, we are a product company. We believe that we already have a very compelling IoT portfolio. And we also believe we have, call it an unfair advantage. If we want to come from things to outcome, as I said many, many times in the last uh, 15 minutes, the business process is key. We are in the position to bring together the business process with the world of the things. We can add any kind of thing because for us, we are developers, it's just a data model. The thing could be a truck, a trailer, a car, it could be a machine or a train. It doesn't matter because it's represented as a thing, it has time series associated to it, the data are used in a business process and we continuously innovate by adding IoT applications on top for specific scenarios. Now, if I look at the fair here and I look at the talk tracks, I guess we all agree that logistics, the connected vehicle, connected manufacturing, those are the topics everybody here is talking about. Yeah? I guess this is where everybody here will agree there are substantial business cases and there's uh, substantial revenue opportunity. But we also invest into other areas. Digital farming is a very nice example where IoT is the enabler for the digital transformation. It is the agriculture machine on the field. It's the sensors on the field that actually gives you the data to make predictions, predictions with regards to utilization of fertilizer or pesticides to increase crop, increase crop protection and have higher, higher revenues in that area. Smart cities is on the horizon. Together with autonomous driving, we, we, we only have a glimpse of an understanding what will be possible. But to support this portfolio, we invested a lot on the infrastructure side, in security, in partnerships with regards to edge computing. We invested in our HANA platform for the on-premise world. We are making use of our HANA cloud platform for cloud scenarios, but this is a technology layer. And we have a lot of discussions what differentiates technology. It's not the technology per se that differentiates. It's what you do on top of the technology. And this is where we bring in our more than 40 years of experience in application development by adding application services that will enable customers and partners to very quickly build their own scenarios on top. A thing model, a time series storage, certain specific content for fleet analytics, routing optimization for transportation. So there are many, many services which you can consume to support those scenarios on top. So it's not our intent to, let's say, deliver the one standard fleet application. It's our intent to give you all the opportunity to build your specific scenario on top because you might consider that scenario being differentiating and not necessarily a standard which we want to share with the rest of the world. Now, as I said in the beginning, um, we have a very interesting job. Uh, just four weeks back uh, in the area of connected vehicles, we had the opportunity to connect the uh, newest Trenitalia high-speed train, the Freccia Rossa, the Red Arrow. Uh, we connected the train live at 300 kilometers per hour and we showed the live machine data in the train. That was an interesting experience. But if you want to make this happen and you want to show IoT live in a scenario like this, you need to have great people who can get this done within days and make it happen. And one of those guys is Andreas Wendel from my team. Andreas, welcome on stage. So what are you going to show us? I think I will show how you really can use IoT to reinvent your business. So if we, okay, we have the demo. So what you basically see, it's a data stream. So we get different parameters. 
us from a connected car in this case. So you can check, for example, speed, engine speed. Of course, there's a lot of more parameters. We do not show them here. But it's not just any data stream. To be honest, it's a data stream of my company car that we took during a ride um, in terms of a company POC where we connected our entire fleet to our Vehicle Insights platform. So, of course, having a look at data streams in real time, it's quite nice, but it does not bring us any value. But what we can do in real time is we can get informed as soon as sensors send some strange information. So let's have a look what we got here. So we got some warning about low fuel rail pressure. In the details, we can see that this problem occurred quite often during the last days. So what we take is we take the sensor data, analyze it compared with historic data in real time, and can with this go in the area of predictive maintenance. So the system can give us the hint that until now it's just a warning, but in the near future you might really have a severe problem. So that's already quite good, but how do we really create value? So it's about using this information to offer better services for your customers. In this case, think of a service provider. You might directly check out who is close by, you might find available slots. By transmitting the telematics data up front, they might even be prepared when you arrive there, so they will have the right skills available, they might have the right spare parts. So by using IoT, you can reduce the waiting time for the end customer coming to the service provider. So I will confirm the schedule and continue. But it's not only about the real time. It's about storing all this data over a longer period. So in this case, we see, for example, data stored between December and October. So let's drill down and see what else we can do. Now we come to a completely different business. We take the telematics data, and now imagine your insurance company. So what can you do with that? So as young people, it starts with the insurance that you have to pay a lot of money. So you start driving, you get in contract. As you are new, you get a higher risk class. But if you connect the car and connect it to a telematics platform, the insurance company can really see how you are driving. So as a young driver, if you are driving according to the rules, you might really get a discount. So let's take, for example, the geo position. And what we can do is we take the information where are you driving. We can match it with speed limits. So we can really analyze that we as a young driver are really driving according to the rules. The same applies for other risk factors, like for example, driving in cities is more dangerous. So we take the geo position, do some reverse geocoding, and can see that we are normally not driving in cities, so there's less risk. Again, let's bring this to business. You, as an insurance company, can get the score from previous years, but also the score for this year. So what we see is that this young lady, she really made a good performance, especially compared to their peer group. And now take this information and think a bit further. What you would normally do is you just give her a discount on their current insurance contract. But think a bit further. If you really know the lady, and you might know that she is, for example, a fan of sports, you might not just give her a discount that she gets and forget afterwards, but you might give her some personal incentive, like an invitation to an event. So it's about taking telematics data, creating new value by changing the business models, connect it with CRM, and then create some personalized um, experience for your customer. So with that, I hope I could show two examples how IoT can reinvent business. And with that, handing back over to Stefan. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you. Next generation developers. Yeah. Now, coming to a, towards the end, um, this, what we just shown you, is an example of many, many applications that can be built. And as I mentioned earlier, our goal is that we provide the highest flexibility to, provide, to build those kind of scenarios across the industries we just shown. And here are just some of the examples of our current reference customers in very, very different domains. I mentioned Hamburg Port Authority, Stara in Brazil, one of our co-innovation partners in the area of digital farming, one of the market leaders for agriculture machines in Brazil. Is farming big in Brazil? 25% of the gross income of Brazil is farming. This is a huge market. AMG, one of our very, very innovative clients moving from using IoT in developing their superior engines in their engine test scenarios now, even moving into the driver experience domain because an AMG is something you need to experience. This is not just going from A to B. Harley-Davidson, improving their out 
output in the plants by 2,300% by applying Industry 4.0 uh, solutions in their manufacturing area. And there are many, many other examples. Kesa, I just mentioned, Trenitalia, um, we not even connected the train life. Um, there's a bigger project even going on where Trenitalia wants to apply predictive maintenance to bring down their current budget of 1.3 billion euros by 8 to 10 percent. That's substantial. And that shows that IoT is not for geeks and nerds, it's business. We saw that opportunity. We made IoT being a strategic topic for SAP. It's one of our five strategic topics in addition to S4, cloud, business networks, and platform. We will invest something like two billion euro in the next three years in development, in sales, and service, but we will also invest into our ecosystem. We want to take a very collaborative approach. Like we heard from IBM, IoT is an area where you partner. You have to be open. You have to bring together partners with different strengths. You have to co-innovate. You have to go to market together, and you have to make use of the best partners out there in order at the end to deliver the best solutions to your clients. We also want to innovate with you. We have invested a lot into design thinking, into co-innovation approaches to help our clients to really jumpstart and to start thinking big what is possible, but start small by getting tangible results. I personally believe, as I said in the beginning, IoT is the, one of the, if not the most interesting area in IT currently. It's great fun working in this domain. Looking forward to work with you. Um, and I hope you continue to enjoy this event. Thank you very much.